All right, it looks like we've had a, a little drop in, in the, the people joining. So this, this might be it for a little while. Um, so I'll go ahead and start by introducing myself. Um, contrary to what the, it says on the screen, my name is not Brett Randolph. Um, I am Michael Palmier. Um, I am the, uh, the Central States District Marketing and PR guy. Um, so I've been doing, I've had that role for, gosh, um, six years, maybe. I kind of forget when I started. It was 2015, 2016, some, somewhere around there. Um, so I am physically located in Southwest Missouri, um, about an hour north of Joplin. Um, unfortunately, I currently am a barber shopper without a home, so I don't have a uh, I don't have a home home course, home chapter, or anything at the moment. Um, hopefully, that won't that won't be the case for too long. Um, but when I did, I was singing with the uh, the tri statesman down in Joplin. Um, they they aren't really meeting anymore at the moment you know covid kind of put a wrench into everything so they're they're not meeting at the moment and i have three small children so making it to rehearsal of, of any kind is pretty challenging um so to, to i guess to give a little bit of background on why i feel confident to help you guys um, learn more about about marketing is uh, I do marketing, graphic design, um, all of that, that genre of work um, as my full-time job, as well as helping out with, uh, with the district. Um, and the, the job that I have right now, I've had it for 10 years now. Um, so I've, I've got a few years under my belt and have learned, learned a few things here and there. Um, so before we start digging into into the real content of, of everything. Um, I was wondering if you guys would just quickly introduce yourselves um, and let everybody know who you are, where you're from, and if you're the marketing person or if you're just looking to get some information, uh, that, that sort of deal. So just feel free to unmute yourself and, and introduce. Uh, Bill Rathman with uh, Sounds of Harmony out of Belleville, Illinois. Um, I'm a former member of the uh, Ambassadors of Harmony since 2000, well, 2019. I uh, kind of got away from it because of COVID uh, restrictions, so we really haven't done a lot since 2019. Get, just getting back into it, I guess, this year, but I haven't been back there yet. I'm waiting on uh, them to ease some, some restrictions and things like that, but currently I'm a member of the Sounds of Harmony out of Belleville. And uh, uh, yeah, we're doing some good things there too. All right, who's next? Uh, he's he's being a little modest. Uh, Bill is our is our chapter president currently. Uh, this is Tom Cunningham, also from Belleville. Uh, let me turn my picture back on. Thanks. Uh, and I'm. I'm not well i previously have served as the marketing person but mostly at this point just interested in whatever i can to help the chapter uh we're uh in some manner struggling with various things and marketing is one of them so just here for information okay i'm becky stock uh dave is uh, a little zoomed out at the moment um <laughs> he's uh not the marketing he's the president of the omaha chapter but uh i'm uh, sitting in to get some information for marketing for them awesome i'm bill leslie with the uh, grand island chapter nebraska i live in york york nebraska about oh 45 50 miles away and uh I'm currently the president of the chapter. I have been for a few years. I've directed the chapter for 
uh, I had about 25 years and then backed off for a couple, three or four years. And then now we still need a director. So I'm kind of back into it again. So I'm kind of wearing multiple hats and, uh, uh, you know, marketing is going to be one of them, membership. And along with, well, our board is basically uh, the music team and, and membership and, and marketing and, you know, every, everybody kind of does everything. So, because we are super small and, and struggling like a lot of people. Yeah. Holden Cross, Harmony Delegation, Des Moines, Iowa. I'm president and uh, assistant director for the group. And my marketing person couldn't make it today. So just wanted to uh, get some ideas and, and pass those along or get them in touch with you. Uh, so we can uh, get uh, that function uh, going in our, our organization as well. I'm Larry Holacek, I'm the president of the Cedar Rapids Harmony Hawks. Uh, got that back again after having a couple year hiatus. So um, obviously our marketing person isn't here either. So I'm it, I attended all of them today. So <laughs> I, I recognize a few faces for most of the, the meetings here, so. I'm Tony from uh, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, representing the Heart of America Chorus and uh, newly appointed to the marketing VP position. So I'm all ears because this is a whole new uh, venture for me and I'm looking for some direction as to how to make the most of it. And I thank you for putting this on. All right. Is that everybody? I think so. Well, I will say that I'm, I am glad that almost everyone here is currently um, a chapter president. <laughs> um, I am a former chapter president. Um, so that, that uh, I've always felt that a lot of the skills that are needed for um, to be an effective chapter president, you also need to be an effective uh, marketing and PR guy or gal. Um, so I am also a huge proponent of making sure that whenever you're planning something that you have the marketing people at the table as well. So uh, I will get on my soapbox for, for just one moment and, and get that message out to the chapter presidents that we have here today, that whenever you're planning something, get the marketing person at the table from the beginning. It's a lot easier to come up with a plan for marketing when you start from the beginning rather than when everything's already planned and like, oh, we have this ready. Now you need to go tell people about it. Um, so that's, that's my little mini soapbox moment. <laughs> um, there won't be many of those. Um, so in the past, the way that I've, that I've led this course is a little bit more discussion oriented rather than how to oriented. Um, and I wanna make sure that you guys get the information that you want to get out of this. Um, so before we move any forward, or before we move any further, I just want to ask you, what what types of information are you wanting to learn? Like what what are you hoping to get out of our time together? Um, do you have any specific questions that that you want to make sure get answered before we before we finish up today? Uh, myself, I'm just. Uh, looking for inf information to pass along as far as uh, um, it, e economically uh, getting our names out there and marketing. Um, we tr I, I mentioned in another seminar that we had tried uh, advertising events and things through newspaper articles and things like that. And uh, the ads are so expensive. It's not really, uh, it doesn't really work for us. We can't really afford a $400 for a one day advertisement. 
you know, so we're, we're, we're looking for some way to get out there, get our name out there. Uh, most bang for our buck, I guess. Okay. Along that too is probably, are there any best practices? You know, obviously there's a lot of people doing it and what has proven to be good in current society. Okay. I guess effective use of social media um, and how to attract a new new uh, group of people because they live on that. Okay, that, that will help with recruitment as well. But uh, how how do we can you effectively use the social media in that respect? So we'll, we, we will touch on both, but are, are, you, are you guys wanting more um, marketing as far as recruiting membership or marketing uh, and promoting your shows or things that, things that you're doing out in the community? Do you, do you have a preference of one or the other? I think, uh, I think, marketing our events more effectively will lead to um, marketing of additional membership. If we can get our names out there more effectively, no matter what, uh, it's going to lead, you know, one's going to feed the other. Third possibility, uh, how do you market in order to create events? Okay. All right. Is there is there anything else that you can think of at the moment? I'm sure more will come up as we, as we dig in. Okay. So a, as we go along, um, just feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, that that will be easier than me trying to to manage the the chat box. Um, and there's there's only eight of us. So it's not like, it's not like there's a huge number of people to interrupt. So um, just feel free to unmute, unmute the mic and, uh, and ask your question. Um, so I know, I know you guys have, have been in, in Zoom meetings um, most of the day. So I, I appreciate you um, sticking around for this one. Um, traditionally, when we do this in person, um, this is this is one of the morning sessions, along with all the other offices. Um, but initially, this was scheduled to be at six o'clock tonight. So we were able to move it up earlier. Uh, my, my daughter had a had a basketball tournament that that we ended up not going to. So I was able to move it up a little earlier in the day. Um, so the the question about the the best practices um, we're we're going to touch on on pretty much on best practices as as we talk about everything else. Um, so the the place that I that I like to start um, is when we're marketing, we need to make sure that we are promoting the actual product. Um, now, what I mean by that is we all, we all know the international quartet videos are out there. We, we know that the international chorus champion videos are out there. Um, so when, when, we're, when we are marketing barbershop as an activity to people, um, if we're not to that level, if we're not one of the international level choruses, or if we don't have international level quartets in our chapter, um, then that's a little bit of false advertising 
if we say, look at this, look at this, look at this, and then they come to your chapter meeting and they see something completely different. Um, so one of, one of the things that I'm, I'm trying really hard to do on the district side um, is something that I, uh, I tell chapter uh, marketing people to do as well. Um, so if you look at the, the districts, um, like the district's website, it is filled with champion quartets, champion courses, and that's it. Um, so we, we are in the process of trying to shift what our website looks like to better reflect what the district actually looks like. Um, now, obviously ambassadors, ambassadors of Harmony is in our district. So, you know, we can certainly showcase that. Um, Central Standard is in our district. We can certainly showcase that. But we also have the Heart of America chorus. We also have the, all, all of your choruses. Um, you know, we've got courses in Iowa. We've got, we've got multiple courses in Nebraska, courses in Nebraska. All of these courses are doing awesome, super things in their communities. And we're not showcasing any of that. Um, so it, from the district point of view, um, it's, it's kind of a lengthy process to, to make that shift. Um, but we're, we're, we're starting that lengthy process. Um, so from the, from the chapter perspective, um, that, that just goes back to, you know, if you do, um, if you do a lot of public sing outs, then showcase that. If you do a lot of, um, if you do a lot of like private events, then showcase that. If you do a lot of, if you, if you only do concerts, then showcase your concerts. Um, to one of the things that I struggled when I was a chapter president um, and having a, a marketing background is that when you're trying to market your, your chorus to be um, something in the community that has value, obviously you know that, but you're trying to tell other people that, right? Um, so you really need to have an excellent sense of your chapter's identity. Um, so what are the things that your chapter does really, really well? What are the things that your chapter doesn't do very well? Um, just knowing the answers, the answer to those two questions will help you a ton. Because let's say that, um, let's say that you're really good about getting out in the community and singing for various community events. Um, if that's something that you do really, really well, and you want to do more of that, then, may, then that's something that you need to grab onto and that you need to, you need to showcase through your, through your website, through your social media, through, um, through your local contacts with the Chamber of Commerce, with your local contacts with the Rotary Club, you know, the, those sort of things. Um, if you don't have a clear, um, a clear definition of, of your, your chapter's identity, then it's going to be really hard to market the chapter. Um, and so that, that's something, uh, since most of you are, are chapter presidents, that, that's something that you can kind of help spearhead the process of, um, of helping the, the, the chapter determine what that identity is. Um, you know, maybe you guys do singing Valentine's every year, and that is your, your one fundraiser that you do every year, 
and you do an absolutely amazing job with it, then you need to be making sure that everyone in the community knows when Valentine's Day is coming, these are the guys, these, these are the people you need to contact. This is the hot ticket this Valentine's Day. You know, that that sort of deal. Um, so that, it, going to the, the last point about marketing to create events, um, that's that's kind of where, where that comes from. Um, now, I mentioned, you know, your various contacts. Um, most communities will have a will have a chamber of commerce, or a Rotary Club, or a Lions Club. Um, you know, lots of different uh, community organizations. That I would venture a guess that at least one person in your chapter is a member of most of those. Um, if not, then I, I see I see Becky shaking her head no. <laughs> um, if those are available and you don't have somebody, um, if you don't have somebody in one of those organizations, then that that could be some untapped potential. Um, either trying to recruit somebody from that organization to come and be a part of yours, or see if there's somebody in your organization that wants to be a part of be a part of one of those. Um, obviously, the Chamber of Commerce isn't really something that an individual can necessarily join, um, but you can at least develop some contacts with the um, with their marketing person or just someone in the building. Most chambers of commerce don't have a robust staff. Um, so if you know one person, then chances are they, they've probably got some, some knowledge of, of what, what's going on. Um, So any, any questions on that so far? You mentioned the uh, like websites and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What are the ramifications? You know, you want to showcase your chorus or whatever on the website. Uh, what's the best way to do that? If you take pictures and stuff like that, what are the ramifications of posting pictures of your chorus? Uh, on your website, maybe of a function that you were at, uh, if you have a uh, like a festival or a picnic or something like that, and you want to post some pictures, is there any legalities on posting stuff like that? Um, not not necessarily. Um, obviously, the the people that are in the chorus um, or in the chapter, I guess I I need to retrain my mind that course and chapter aren't the same anymore. Um, um, the, the people in your chapter should already be aware that if they come to an event, then it's highly likely that their photo is gonna be taken. Um, and generally, if it's a public event, then it's, it's pretty generally understood that if you're at a public event, um, if they take pictures and it gets posted, then the, the the fact that you're there is you saying I'm okay with my picture being taken. Um, the The only time that I would really be concerned about that is like with singing Valentine's. If you want to if you want to take a picture and post that, um, because most of the time the people who are receiving the singing Valentine didn't ask for it. Um, you just showed up and hey we're going to sing to you and give you a flower and a card and or what you know what whatever your uh whatever your chapter does um so you may you may want to ask them hey do you mind if we post a picture on our social media or if we post a picture on the website um most most of the time if you just verbally ask them and they say yes then that's fine or if they say no then you just make a mental note, say, hey, this person said not to do it. So in good faith, let's not do it. Um, but if, if, you, if you are super concerned about legality, then you can, you can find online um, just a general 
photo release form that, that you can have someone sign. Um, I mean, it, it can be just as, as simple as I write your name, give organization, write your organization's name, permission to use my use a photo of me for marketing materials photo or video or what have you. It, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out contract. I mean, it can literally be two sentences um, just, just so that you have that documentation that they said, yes, it was okay. Um, now, there are some places that the location that you're doing it at might have their own set of rules. Um, Generally, with, with public performances, that's not going to be that big of an issue. Um, but like I, I work for a medical center. Um, so that we have we have lots of rules about what you can and cannot take a picture of and who you can and cannot take a picture of um, when, when you're at, at one of the, you know, at, at our campus. Um, the likelihood of of a, a chorus having a performance at a medical center um, is pretty low, I would imagine. Um, so, I mean, I think the closest thing that you would get would probably be like at a nursing home, um, which most nursing homes, they don't really care. They're just glad you're there. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how many times we've gone to sing at a, um, at a nursing home and they were just thrilled that somebody else showed up um, they also will take the pictures for you and post it on mm -hmm. their own pages yeah um so but to to kind of touch a little bit on this on the social media here um what what becky just mentioned the that they'll take a picture and post it on their own that is an excellent way to uh to get your your brand out in the community is if they take a picture of you and they post it on, on their page and then you share their post, then it's a little bit of I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. Um, you know, you, you tag us in your post and we'll tag you in ours so that both audiences are seeing both perspectives. Um, and we'll 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 get into that a little bit more uh, here in a little bit, um, but that that is that is an excellent way, um, because at, at its core, marketing whether it's marketing an event, marketing for recruitment, or just marketing to get your name out there, it all boils down to what you're trying to do is build a relationship. Um, I mean, it's, it's the same thing with sales. If you don't have a relationship, then you're not going to make the sale, right? Um, so th think about that when you're trying to come up with, with marketing ideas. Um, you know, if, if you're trying to, to build a new relationship with somebody, if I do this, would that build a relationship or would that get in the way of a relationship? Um, you know, if, if I'm trying to, you know, you can think, think back uh, to the days when, um, when you were single and out on the town trying to find a, trying to find someone to spend your life with, you know, you're marketing you, you're marketing yourself. Right. So if I do X, is that going to make so and so more or less interested in me? You know, it's it's the same thing when you're trying to market your your chorus or your chapter. If I do X, are they are they going to want to come come join me at a rehearsal or are they not? Um and, you know, some, for some people, the answer may be, if you do this, then yeah. And then other people, if you do the exact same thing, it's going to be, nope, I, I don't want any part of that. 
and, and you can't really control that. Um, so let's see. Um, so building a little bit more on the, on the relationship aspect of it, um, I have a huge glare on my monitor. Hang on a second. There we go. Um, I have a giant window right here. <laughs> um, so how many of you ask the, the regulars that you have that come to your, to your shows? Um, how many of you ask those regulars? how they how they found out about your show that they're at we've just started doing that through our our ticketing uh option that we use currently okay so we're just getting into that Both groups that I'm related with used to do that and found it not very valuable because the only people who came were members, were family members or, or close friends of people who actually perform with you. Okay. Does anyone else have any experience with that? Okay. So... When, when you ask your regulars how they found out, then you're, you're probably going to get feedback like Becky shared about, you know, they're, they're people, they're family members of, of the, the, the course members. So they heard about it because, you know, they, they've, been, they've been talking about it for months now. Um, the the valuable information that you're going to get is from the people who aren't aren't the regulars. Um, when you when you do get somebody uh, who hasn't been to a show before, then get send a member out there, shake meet them out in the lobby and shake their hand. Hey, thanks for coming. Do you mind if I ask you how you found out about our show today? Um, what'd you like? You know that that sort of thing, um, because for for your marketing to be effective, you you have to get the word out to where the people are. Um, so by by getting that information from people, then you can start tailoring your marketing a little bit more effectively. Um, and the more effective your marketing is, then the more cost effective it's going to be. Because if if nobody is if nobody is looking at the newspaper, then those four hundred dollar newspaper ads are just money down the drain. I've been considering, but I haven't been able to do anything yet. Uh, I live in a, a large enough area that there are sub communities, and okay. the communities have pages on Facebook. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking maybe that's the way to go since there aren't that many newspapers. Yeah. So yeah, if you can if you can get the word out um, through through those um, through those subcommittees, then then absolutely that that would be an excellent way to do it. Um, and it costs you nothing. It costs you time. That's it. Um, so. What what are some of the ways that you guys Mike? have have marketed in the past? Oh, yeah. Can I say something? Sure. I, well, we're finding. Um, I I wasn't raised in the barber shop, typical thing. I joined about ten years ago, so up to that point, I knew nothing about it, um, and was actually recruited by a guy at my church who was in the barber shop, and that's how I got the join the Kansas City Heart of America. What we're finding, I, I think, is that when people hear barbershop, if you're trying to recruit a younger group 
they tend to say that's old school. You know, it's it's old music. It's it's it, it's not relevant. And I'm just wondering sometimes if it would be better to promote it as an acapella singing event as opposed to barbershop. Are other people seeing that too? Because we're losing we're losing young members. What well, we can't even get young members, you know, um, very easily. And and as we age off, <laughs> you know, as you age, your voices, you know, aren't the same. So the quality suffers. But when I mention barbershop to my sons or even friends of theirs, or, you know, they're, they're thinking of the old style, you know, bow tie, non-traditional, I mean, traditional, you know, not with it stuff. And so I right. wonder sometimes if it would be better to promote it as an acapella event as opposed to quote barbershop. Am I wrong on that? No, you're not wrong. Uh, our, uh, I'm also a member of the local Sweet Adeline's Chorus. And we actually changed our name from Omaha to Acapella Omaha. Oh, wow. Did it and make a difference? It has made some difference. It also, also changing what repertoire you have. But you have to have people who can do the new repertoire. That, I agree. And you also have to have a leadership that's willing to take that risk, too. <laughs> Yeah, so that, but that's an that, that goes back to what we were talking about I a little bit ago about knowing, knowing what your identity is. Um, exactly. Because there, there are choruses that, that are very much the, the traditional, you know, pinstripes and boater hats and bow ties. Correct. Um, and there, there are courses that aren't. Yeah, so. Very good point. You know, so if if you're wanting to target the people who want to have the, the more, uh, the more modern arrangements, but you are, your identity is the more traditional stuff, yes. then there, you're always going to have that struggle. Um, so I, I think so, someone in the membership class was suggesting that uh, it would, would be possible to have a, a secondary chorus Mm -hmm. within your chapter uh, may share a lot of the same members but do music that uh, the younger kids would like and some of the older kids older kids can handle yeah that that's you know we we live in in a time right now in 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 barbershop where the possibilities are are really only limited to your imagination. Um, you know, it no longer is it one chapter, one chorus. You can have one chapter with four choruses. You can have a traditional chorus. You can have a modern chorus. You can have a men's chorus. You can have a women's chorus. You can have a mixed chorus all under one chapter. They made the point that to do that, you need to direct uh, as many directors as there are choruses and that can be a problem true yeah that that is absolutely the, i mean i there there are there are plenty of courses out there that are struggling for one director um <laughs> so yeah, as as the man who got roped back into directing a chorus raises his hand <laughs> um but yeah so the you know, it, there's always going to be a struggle between um, between goals and resources. Um, you know, I, the, you know, there's the old saying of wish, wish in one hand and you know what in the other, and see which one fills up. Um, so you know, you can if 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 you have people who are dedicated enough to um, to build that identity, then they're going to find someone eventually because if, if they're that driven to it, then they're not going to stop until they find, until they find someone. Um, so. Or leave. Yeah. So it, when, when you say that, it, it reminds me that I, I learned um, a very valuable lesson when I went to um, it was, I think it was a leadership forum that was put on by, um, 
by the Harmony Hall folks. Um, and they made, I don't remember what the, the I don't remember what the presentation was. I don't remember who, who gave the presentation, but I remember them making the comment that whatever someone's desired experience is, they will find it. So that is, that is one of the reasons that I don't have a, a chapter at the moment because the course that I was in was not the experience I wanted. Um, and so it, I, I was faced with that decision of, do I continue going to rehearsal and being miserable? Or do I stop going to rehearsal and just be sad that I don't have rehearsal to go to? And not going to rehearsal and being sad was, better for my mental health than going every Tuesday night and being absolutely miserable by the time rehearsal was over. Um, so the, that, 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 one, that one sentence kind of reframed the way that, that I look at, at marketing for, not necessarily recruitment, but marketing for retention. Um, because you know there's 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 the saying that once they walk in the door you're not recruiting them anymore recruiting them gets them to the door once they've walked walked through the door you're not recruiting them anymore now you're trying to retain them and that's that's a whole different strategy um and i i assume that don probably talked about that at some somehow um it may not have been directly, but I'm sure he probably did indirectly. Um, if the, those of you who, who were in, in Don's marketing session or not marketing membership session, I'm sure that it was a, it was a, an absolute um, perfect use of your time. Um, he, he is a very intelligent, intelligent guy and he is so dialed in. Um, we, we as a district are blessed to have him. Um, so. Well, the, the main point he made about retention mm -hmm. was the retention starts before somebody is unhappy. Yeah. So yeah. At least that's, my, that's my brief summary of what he said is you need to, you need to be in touch with your people all the time. Yeah. So I, goes, I mentioned, oh, sorry. Which goes Go ahead. back to being aware that uh, of what it is your chorus is and marketing for that. I didn't catch the first part. Was that a question or a statement? Statement. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it, keeps, it keeps going back to the, whole, the, the, the relationship. Um, to have, to have a good relationship, you need to have a clear understanding of, of who you are. Um, and there needs to be good, effective, and continual communication. Um, one of the things that has taken me a long time to convince my um my coworkers is that sending an email out about a program once is just a waste of your time because they're going to see it they're like oh hey that's interesting and then they're going to get 10 more emails later on in the day so there has to be a continual communication. Um, now, everybody's market is going to be a little bit different on what that schedule looks like. It could be, it could be where sending an email out once a month is, is perfectly sufficient. You may have an audience where sending it out 
once once every two weeks is more effective. Um, and the only way to really determine that is to try it, get some feedback on how it worked, and then make adjustments from there. Um, I mean, mar marketing is a process. You know, it's not it's not just a well, we're going to send some emails out. We're going to post some stuff on, on Facebook and we'll see who shows up on Saturday. Um, you know, it, it, it takes work just like any relationship does. It takes work. It takes communication. Um, so one of the things that, that I wanted to mention um, that a lot of people don't necessarily think of as marketing um, mostly because a lot of a lot of chapters have their secretary do it. Um, but marketing to your own membership. Um, making sure that all of the guys on the risers or girls, making sure that everyone on the risers is bought in. Making sure that everybody has their hands in the same cookie jar. Um, one, one of the things that um, when I was a chapter president, we were, we were, we did a very bad job at planning our, um, planning our annual shows. Um, if we had a show in September, we would start planning it in, I don't know, mid July. Um, and that's not, that's not a good recipe. Um, especially once we started trying to book bigger name, uh, quartets for our, for our featured guest, you know, we started reaching out to some of them and they needed a year, a year notice. Um, so I, I gave my show team a challenge. I said, I want you to plan, because this, this was probably in October-ish. And I said, I want you to plan our spring show and next spring's show now. And at first they looked at me like, you're crazy. To which I responded, I know, but you can do it. Um, and so, you know, I, I had to, I had to give them, you know, give them a little shove every now and then be like, and check in and see how they were doing, if there was anything they needed help with, but they did it. And what that did was that started the practice of planning, starting our shows, starting planning for our shows a year in advance. And up until COVID, that was working out pretty well. That they were like, hey, you know what? Maybe we should put a little bit more effort into these. Um, but in order for something like that to work, you I mean, you have to have the buy-in. And so marketing to your membership is just as important because if if you have a fundraiser coming up, um, like uh, Ambassadors of Harmony have their their foundation gala. Is it coming up or did it just happen? I don't remember. Um, but something like something like that, that is a huge undertaking. And that is not something that you can start planning two months in advance. I, I imagine they probably start planning, it, I would imagine more than a year in advance for, the, for that. But it takes buy-in from everyone to pull something off or to pull that off. So it, it, it takes a little bit more than just your weekly newsletter that you pass out at, at chapter, at, at rehearsal. Um, it takes going and sitting down with someone that 
you can you can see in their eyes that you know maybe they're not so sure about this this uh this this new idea that the that the chapter is trying you know and sitting down with them you know taking it upon yourself as the marketing guy because you're supposed to be the the one who who shares the good news you know um so you know take it upon yourself and go sit down with that guy and be like hey you know and that's when we were talking about this, you, you know, you looked a little bit unsure. Is, is there something you're concerned with? Is there something that you maybe, maybe they just don't understand and they need a little bit more explanation? Um, you know, those type of things when it comes to marketing within your, your, uh, your chapter can go a really long way to getting them bought in. Because regardless of what it is, if, if the members don't buy into it, it's not going to be a success. Mike? Yes. What was it you're referencing the Ambassadors of Harmony do? Uh, was it a membership gala? What did you call it? Um, it the Ambassadors of Harmony Foundation Gala. What is that? I've never, I'm not familiar with that. Um, what, what is, if you take us a couple of seconds. And... So it is, it's a very large fundraiser that they do. Okay. Um, okay. And so I know, I know this year, like they they auction certain things off. Okay. Um, I know one thing that they were auctioning off this year was a um like a, a like a one hour Zoom meeting with the gals from GQ. Okay. And just hang out with them for an hour. Uh huh. Um. Oh. You know, but talk so about whatever you want to talk about. So this is a foundation. It's a separate organization from the chapter, right? I, I don't know the specifics of it. Okay. Um, I, I would assume that it probably is, but I don't know for sure. Okay. Um, but like uh, in, in, my, in my chorus or in my chapter back in 2013, I think it was, um, we had a brand new multi-million dollar performing arts center open up in um, open up in a, a local a local town. Um, it was on a college campus. And we a lot of the people were alumni of that college. And so we decided, you know what? We need to have a concert in there. Um and we, for our shows, we averaged, I don't know, a hundred people in the audience, maybe. Um, but for this particular one, we knew that, that we were gonna, we were gonna do top notch work on every level. Um, we brought in lunch break. Um, before it was, it was right before they retired, I think maybe it was right after, I don't remember. Um, but we brought them in and we were the first non-university sponsored performance in, in that facility. Um, we were on the books before they were done, before they finished building it. Um, and we tried some new music, some, we try, I mean, we, we basically did a, a total 180. We put so much work into it. Um, we ran TV advertising. The, that was something that we had never done before. Um, we reached out and got, um, got news coverage that was few and far between in the past. Um, we did, uh, we did social media ticket giveaways. Um, and if I remember right, I think our, I think our tickets say our, our total tickets that we had, including the, the comp tickets that we had for, um, for sponsor, we, we sold sponsorships for the show, which is something that we'd never done before. Um, so all, all tickets combined, I think we had about 350. 
um, which is the largest show we have ever had and the largest show that we've ever had since. Um, it was hugely successful. Um, but we also kind of saw how much work that was. Um, and so we, we were able to get the members to buy in for this one time. And then they, they realized how much work it was. And they're like, maybe we ought to reel this back a little bit. Um, and so, so we did. And, you know, obviously our, our attendance dropped. Um, but it was still a, it was still a, a decent, um, a decent attendance. Um, but did it, it remain, took, did yeah. it remain higher than it, than, uh, when you start before you started? Um, most of them did. We had a couple of duds here and there. <laughs> I mean, we, we've had our share of, of performances where the chorus outnumbered the audience. Um, we, we, so, I mean, we, we've had a couple of duds mixed in here and there, um, but it, it's, it had been pretty, pretty well, well attended in the community. Um, <clears throat> it also helps that we had a really good relationship with our, um, S, we had an SII chapter um, in our community as well. And so it helped us out a lot to work with them because they had a much better, um, they had a much better public, um, public image than we did. Um, or not, not better, bigger. They had a bigger presence um, in the community than we did. Um, so we were able to, to utilize some of their help um, to reach out to their, their audience. Um, it also helps that we invited them to perform on the show as well. Um, so we're like, hey, you know, if, if you help us out by getting the word out, you know, you can come on stage, sing a couple, two, three songs. Um, we'd, we'd love to have you. Um, I don't know how many other chapters do that. Um, but we, we would, we would have our, our shows on our own, but we would also do um, combine events with the, with the uh, the Sweet Adelines chapter as well. Um, and it, I mean, it, all all that does is build a greater barbershop community. Um, We've had a couple sort of like that, but the the problem has been each of those has been a uh, an unpaid performance hmm. for you know it's it's a nobody gets paid for it no tickets oh yeah yeah so in in the past we we done a couple of those um we shared a rehearsal space um because we our chapter had a rehearsal space that we had for a very long time um and then when the tornado came through joplin um our our rehearsal space didn't no longer existed um and so when they rebuilt it, they took that as an opportunity to be like, you know what, we let, we don't really want you guys to come back. So then we kind of bounced around for a couple of months before we um, we got in contact with the place where the Sweet Adeline chapter was. Um, and so we asked them and they're like, yeah, sure. So we were there on Tuesdays, they were there on Thursdays. And when we had a show, they would come on, on Tuesdays and sit in the audience and listen to our dress rehearsal. And when they had a show on Thursday, we had come and sit in the audience for their dress rehearsal. Um, and at least once a year, we would come, we would together do something for, the, the rehearsal space was at a church. Um, so to get, we would get together and we would do something for, do a performance for the church. Um, usually around Christmas time, we do a, a Christmassy themed show um, for them, um, but we're we're getting a little off a little off track here. Um, let me go back to my notes here. Uh, 
Um, so let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about the um, the 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 budget friendly ways uh, of doing some some marketing. Um, obviously, social media is is for the most part budget friendly. Um, to do it organically, all it does is cost you time. Um, but you can do paid targeted advertising on social media. Um, and it is fairly cheap. Um, you, I mean, you can start an ad campaign for as little as like $7. Um, so it, it is not super, super costly. Um, it can be, uh, depending on how frequently you, you want thing, things um, pushed out and depending on the, the audience that you're trying to reach, you know, it, 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 it can over time um, get, get expensive. But if, if, you, if you just want to try and dip your toe into the water, you know, you can spend $15. And, and have some, have a, have a decent um, Facebook ad campaign. Um, and the the system is pretty user friendly. Um, it, it walks you through everything pretty easily. Um, so that that is that is a, a very uh, cost effective way to get the word out. Um, and again, when you're using social media, it's very uh, it's very dependent upon engagement. Um, so, if you have if you have a Facebook page and somebody sends you a message through Facebook, like they want to their 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 grandpa has a birthday party and they they want to know if if you guys have a quartet that they can come and sing. Um, if you don't respond to them in a timely fashion, then Facebook will know that. And the more and more you delay responding, then Facebook is going to start letting people know that this page does not respond quickly. Um, if you're a Facebook user and you go to a page, you may see something on there that says this page typically replies within an hour. Um, or it may say, um, uh, it, it may, it, that's usually the one that I see the most. Um, so it, it may say something different for a different organization. Um, you can set up like auto-generated responses so that whenever somebody sends a message, they immediately get one back um, that says, you know, thank you for reaching out. We will, we will um, be in contact with you as soon as possible. Um, you know, something like that. And that's, that's kind of one way to, to kind of fudge the numbers a little bit on how quickly on, on your response rate. Um, but in my opinion, what's even more important is your engagement with the things that you post online or that you post on, on for, for discussion sake, we'll, we'll say Facebook. Um, because if somebody posts something on there and then you interact with, with what it, if you post something and they comment on it and then you reply to them, then that's going to drive your engagement up. And the more engagement that you have, the more likely that Facebook is going to take it upon itself to share your content with people. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I, I have a hard time getting my wife to understand is that Facebook shows you what you want to see. So, if you are engaging, if you as a user are engaging with multiple barbershop chorus Facebook pages, then Facebook is going to show you more and more content from barbershop quartet 
their barbershop course pages. Likewise, if 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 you are if you're a big fan of let's say Vocal Spectrum, um, if they post something on there and you you look at it but you don't actually engage with it, you don't click on anything then it's going to say, okay, yeah, they looked at it, but they didn't do anything with it. So obviously they don't care that much. So the more and more you do that, the more and more likely it is that Facebook isn't going to show you Vogel Spectrum's posts anymore. They may still be posting. You're just not going to see it until you, until you take it upon yourself to go look for it. If that makes sense. Um, so the more and more that you can engage with your audience, then the higher success rate you're going to have with your social media. What do you do if you have, don't have anybody who uses social media in your group? So if you don't have anybody, then you have a couple of options. Um, you can see if you can find someone or you can just say social media isn't part of our identity and we 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 want to in, in my opinion it's it's better to just not do it at all than to do it poorly um that that's my opinion um i try not to share opinion too much but that that's my opinion um because i I have been vol voluntold to take over a number of um, social media pages for various organizations. Um, and it was mostly because the people who had it previously, um, they started it, realized that it takes more work than they thought it did, and then they quit doing it. So if let's say that happens to, to your chapter and the person who stopped doing it, stopped doing it in 2019. If somebody moves to town and like, Hey, I wonder if there's a barbershop chorus here. And they, they search on Facebook and they find your page and they see that nothing's been posted since 20, 2019. And they're just going to assume, well, I guess that course doesn't exist anymore. Um, so that that's that's why I have the thought process of it's better to just not do it than to do it very very poorly. Okay. Um, so you mentioned finding somebody to run it for you, and, and if mm -hmm. as I say, if, if you don't have anybody in your chapter, how would you mm -hmm. find someone who can engage with your chapter enough to run it? So you can. Um, if you have a, if you have a college nearby, um, that has a marketing program, like for, um, for students to study marketing, um, you can reach out there and say, you know, Hey, we're looking for a volunteer to run our social media for us. Do you have any students who, who might be interested in that? Good um, idea. Now, if you do that, it's a good idea to uh, to have like a job description. You know, th this is what we want this this person to do um, for a couple of reasons. One, so that that the volunteer has a clear set of expectations, um, and also so that you, as the chapter, have gone through the process to have a set of expectations. Um, so that if, if the volunteer doesn't work out, then you can say, well, this isn't working out because we want this and we're wanting this and we're wanting this and we're not getting any of it. Um, and that can be a very effective teaching moment for that volunteer. Um, because that, that's not, that's not your normal academic setting. You know, if, if they're volunteering to do something then most likely they're going to be they're going to want to be able to put it on their resume so that they can get a big get a big kid job um 
so if if you both have that clear set of expectations then if they're not meeting one of your expectations then you can have the meeting and say you know you're doing a good job with this you're doing a great job with that we need a little bit more here um rather than rather than taking the approach of well we'll know what we want when we see it um that that is that is not a good um that is not a good feedback system uh and likewise a lot of a lot of high schools nowadays um are having more pathway programs so like when when I was in high school, you you took your math, you took your science, you took your history, um, you know you you had a couple of fine art electives, and that that was what you did. You know now there are schools where there are kids in eighth grade that are saying, you know what, I want to go into, I I want to go go into culinary school. So when they get to high school, they're taking classes that prepare them for culinary school. Um, same thing with healthcare, you know, you're, you're taking more, um, you're taking more, uh, more biology classes, more anatomy classes. Um, and they, they have these curriculums set up now. So it's not, you know what, I think I might want to be a doctor. So I'm going to take biology one and two, you know, now you've got four years of biology and four years of anatomy. Um, and so they may have a, a marketing or a graphic design um, class that you may be able to tap into. Um, because volunteering looks great on a resume. It looks even better on a scholarship application. Um, but you also have to understand the risk of when you're working with a high school student you're working with a high school student. Um, you know, they, they don't have a lot of what you would call real world experience. Um, you know, they, they may not have experience being told that they're not doing a good job. Um, so that, that is a risk that you, that you would have to assume if you go down that route. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. Um, it just means that you need to be prepared for for that scenario, uh, should should it arise? Thank you. Um, what time is it? Oh goodness, it's almost four thirty already. I was planning on being done by five. Um, let me see here. So uh, I don't know if this is a good point to interject. I had a, a, something jumped in my mind a while ago. Yeah. Uh, I do, I'm, I'm retired, but I do odd jobs on the side and I have gone through some of the online marketing things like there's one called Thumbtack that lets people hire people to do things for them. Mm -hmm. um, is there any, can you, Envision anything where that type of online marketing might be valuable to a barbershop group. For example, uh, if somebody was out there looking for somebody to entertain at some event, they might go out there and look for that, but I don't know. Can you see that being yeah, yeah, that that can that can I mean, definitely be something that that you can pursue. Um, it's not going to be free. Is the only caution I make there. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's not horrendously expensive. It's it's on the order as I remember. It's like twenty thirty bucks per event, which is not, you know. Yeah. So I I know I don't know of any in particular, but I know there there are. Um, I know there are sites where where you can you can be on there so that if somebody somebody just types into Google, you know, I'm I'm looking for musical entertainment in Des Moines, Iowa, then this site will pop up. 
and it'll, and you can click on it. And here's a list of entertainers. Um, and then you could be on, you can ha have your name listed on there. Um, I think, I don't have any idea what it's called, but I, I, I think there might be like an app available where you can, uh, uh, where people can like reach out to you and, and book you for, uh, for like a birthday party or whatever. Um, don't quote me on that though. I feel, I feel like I've, I've read about that, but I, I'm not hundred percent positive. Well, it's just, um, I just, I guess I just thought I'd throw it out there as, as something I've, I'm not sure if it's applicable even, but it's, it's something to pursue. Yeah. I mean, anything's worth a try at least once. Um, you know, you're not going to know if it's, if it's effective until you try it and go through the scientific method, you know, try it, get some feedback, fix, fix it, try it again, you know, until ultimately you get to the point where you, you've either got it pretty, pretty dialed in or you decide, you know what, this, this isn't an effective use of our time or resources. Um, One, one thing that to, to just briefly touch on, um, if you do have a website, um, refreshing that content is a very good thing to do. Um, I say that, but if you go and look at the, the district's webpage, the, the homepage has been the same for quite a long time. Um, you mean we'll, repost stuff or do you mean just do, reset everything so not necessarily repost things but like um like maybe in maybe in january you feature singing valentine stuff closer to the top um and then as soon as singing valentine's is over you switch it over to maybe maybe you have a spring concert coming up in in april so you immediately switch over to that as soon as singing Valentine's is over. And then when your show's over, immediately you switch over to whatever the next thing is. Um, you know, and then maybe when you get to November, you switch it over to maybe whatever your your holiday stuff is. If you if you have a if you have a Christmas show or if you just do like where where I was from, we had uh, um, we had sing outs at the mall. Um, where we, we would, they would just set out a stage out at the mall and they would just book people every night. Um, it was all volunteer. Nobody got paid for it. Um, but, you know, one night it may be a, a brass quintet. One night it may be a high school choir. One night it was a barbershop chorus. You know, the next night it was a tuba quartet. You know, you just, you just never know what you're going to get, but it's always going to be Christmas carols. Um, so you can, you can, you know, if you know that you're going to do that, then you can move that toward the top of the homepage. Um, just so that whenever somebody goes to your webpage, they see what you have coming up. Any suggestions for how to do that now that we've been two years without being able to do anything? Yeah, so that's a challenge. Um, so... How how many of how many of you have have chapters that are getting back together? The, does an, does anyone have is anyone in a in a chapter that is not getting back together right now? Um, so if you are getting back together, then if you don't if you don't necessarily have anything on the horizon right now then what I would be um, what I would be showcasing is the fact that you're together. Um, and not necessarily even showcasing the singing together, just showcasing the being together. Um, you know, the the couple of guys in the corner singing tags at a break, or you know, the couple of guys sitting at a table, drinking a cup of coffee and catching up with each other. 
um, th those are the things, you know, they say the music got the music got me there, but the people kept me there. You know, th those things, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a cliche if it wasn't true. <laughs> so, you know, showcase some of those things. If you don't necessarily have anything on the horizon right now, you can say, hey, look, here's us. This is who we are. Um, we are a group of men or we're a group of women or we're a group of, of multi-gender people that we like to get together and we like to enjoy each other's company. And when we're not enjoying each other's company, uh, we sing with each other to revitalize our enjoyment with each other. <laughs> you know, th things like that. And, and that, that is content that never goes bad. Um, so if you find yourself in a, in a couple of months, you know, where singing Valentine's is over, but you don't have a show until like September, then you kind of have a, a pretty lengthy period there in between where you don't necessarily have a, a big event coming up. Um, you, whenever you have one of those downtimes, you can always pull out the, the, the fellowship content, um, and showcase that part of your organization. Because it, a, a barbershop chapter is, is so much more than a singing group. Um, and we, we just need to be able to convince people that, that yes, we sing, but you know, really that's like number three on the list of things that we do when we get together. You know, we, we share a cup of coffee, coffee with each other. We, we catch up on, on what our kids are doing. You know, we're, we're, we build relationships with people that we, that we otherwise may have never met. Um, you know, th those, those, are, those are content things that never go bad. You know, selling the fellowship of barbershop is never going to be a bad idea. Um, are there any other questions or comments? I guess, uh, in a way, what we're, what we're trying to do is, is kind of create snippets from a rehearsal or mm -hmm. something like that that we could place on, as far as licensing, uh, what restrictions are, are in place? How much of a song can you do before you, you get... Um, so for that, I would recommend um, reaching out to, um, what's her name, Janice Bain, I think okay. is her name. Yep. Um, I, I defer to her on every single copyright question. All right. Um, my, my expertise when it comes to copyright um, is with um is uh, is with like images and and like art <laughs> things like that mm -hmm. not not music and not recordings of music um so so i i i defer to her on pretty much any any copyright yeah. question sure because yeah. i i don't want to tell somebody yes you can do that and then find out, no, you can't. And then be like, well, Michael said you could. <laughs> and then yeah. so, so I'm very rarely um, do I just flat out pass the buck. But this is one of those yeah. times where I just flat out pass the buck. Sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that since you're not doing it in order to raise money, it will probably be okay. But do check with her. Yeah. Yeah, because I know I know as far as like a performance goes, when you when you pay your performance fees, um, then you're able to post a recording of you performing it. Um, but as far as rehearsing it, I I don't know if if any of that's covered with that. I sure. I don't know. All right, good to know. So what are some things that we'll, we'll take some time here and do, do some, some idea sharing. Um, 
What are some things that, that you have done in the past that either was a really good idea um, that worked out really well or a, a good idea that did not work out very well? Um, what, what, are some, what are some things that, that you have tried in the past that, um, that you think are, are worth sharing? or some things that you want to try? Well, I'll tell you what, well, the we, newspaper, we, newspaper's not contest, around here. If you sold so many tickets, you know, you would be able to, you know, um, qualify for a door prize for an annual show. I know that's probably something you guys have probably done, I assume, but it's worked pretty well. Um, we've also tried to say, you know, um, if you sell 10 tickets, you know, um, or get people to buy 10 tickets, there's a discount after, you know, a volume discount. I don't know, maybe I'm preaching to, <laughs> sharing to the choir here. I don't know, because I'm new to this, but it's worked well in our chapter, those kind of things to encourage enthusiasm for the annual show, as well as get people in the seats. <laughs> Never worked for our course, but that's our course. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? <laughs> said it has never worked for my chorus, but that's my chorus. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill, were you were you about to say something? Uh, well, I was just mentioning that the newspaper is not the way to go where where we're at out here in Illinois. Our local newspaper is just uh, it's just not cost effective, and they don't reach as many people as they used to anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot of uh, local community pages on Facebook or some such? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, I, I, I use Facebook occasionally, but I really don't have much interaction with it. And I, I do need yeah. to get more informed about it, but uh, no, I haven't, I haven't, I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. So one, one thing that I'll, that I'll add, um, especially with smaller chapters, it's really hard to break free from this. Um, but marketing is not a one man job. Um, to, to have effective marketing with social media and with other, other means, whether it be newspaper, whether it be, um, TV, whether, you know, whatever it is, um, if you have one person doing everything, they are going to want to quit so fast. Um, so if you are the marketing VP, <laughs> um, if you're the marketing VP and you don't know anything about social media, that, that doesn't mean that you can't do it that just means that you recognize that you don't have that knowledge and you need to find somebody who does and make them part of your team. Um, that, is, that is something that I'm trying really hard from the district standpoint to do um, because I personally don't have the bandwidth to do the emails and the social media and the website so we have somebody else who does the website. I'm doing the emails and social media, but I would really like someone to take social media off of my plate <laughs> because I, I manage social media for like seven different organizations. And that's a lot. <laughs> um, Sounds like a good paycheck. Well, the fact of the matter is I only get paid for one of them. <laughs> I know, that's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> And that's just on one platform. Um, but then again, that, that's kind of the job I signed up for. Um, yeah, so if, if you don't know how to do something, the only thing that's stopping you from doing it is asking somebody to help you with it. Um, now, as somebody who came from, who's, who 
spent a, a majority of my barbershop life in a very small chapter. Um, I understand that a lot of times the chapter officers is just a rotation. You know, hey, it's I was president for two years. Hey, Bill, it's your turn to be president now. Well, I was president last year. No, no, that was that was him. He was president last year. It's your turn. You know, I I understand that that is a very very real reality for a lot of chapters. Um, but as far as like social media management, like we were talking earlier, there's nothing to stop you from looking outside, um, you know, to find somebody who, who wants to get some volunteer hours um, to, to, to help out an organization. Or if you've got some, um, you know, if you have some, uh, some capital built up, then, you know, maybe you can offer a, you know, offer to pay somebody a, a, a stipend or something like that, whatever you can legally get away with paying somebody. Finance is another one of those things where I just automatically pass the buck. You know, I was just thinking, um, what about local colleges? How about some of the marketing students? Do you think maybe they'd take on a project like that? They could. Yeah, just, you know, for extra credit or something, you know, just some some way to get them some experience too. They could put that under their yeah uh, their resume. Resume is some something they've done, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. Another thing that that we tried that it took a little convincing. To, to do it, but I feel like it was fairly successful, um, is if you are able to, um, if you are able to develop some kind of a, a social media audience, um, it, it doesn't cost you hardly anything to comp a ticket. So you can do, you know, I, I think what we did, I think we gave away a pair of tickets. Um, so we just, we just put it out there, you know, like this post, share it on yours, you know, all, all of those things that you say, these are the steps to, to, to be entered into the drawing. But in reality, these are the things that drive engagement and get our post in front of more people. Um, you know, like, like it, like the page, like the post, share the post and you'll be entered into a drawing for a pair of tickets. Um, we did that and we had we ended up having somebody won the tickets that they'd never attended our, one of our shows before. Um, so that, I, I, I distinctly remember, unfortunately they weren't able to make it um, because they, they got sick um, the night before the show and they reached out and said, can you give them to someone else? And I'm like, yeah, we'll give them to someone else. Um, but, but, and she, she was, she was in contact with us. She's like, I was really looking forward to coming to the show. She's like, I'm really sorry that I got sick. And I'm like, well, it wasn't, <laughs> you can't control when you get sick and when you don't. So, um, you know, that, that was a way to, to really drive up some engagement and, and not, not only engagement to, but to draw up some excitement, um, and so that, and you know, it, it cost us two, two comp tickets, which, which, you know, for, for our shows, that was like 30 bucks, you know, that to, to get someone to spend $30 and get someone at our show, that's never been to one of our shows. I I'd consider that to be a, a pretty, pretty effective use of 30 bucks. Well, and the seat probably would have been empty anyway. Yeah. So any other questions or comments? I, I think I think we've in some some form or another, I think we've covered everything that, that you guys mentioned when we got started. Does anyone feel like they have any questions that haven't been answered? I don't think so, but 
your comment of, of getting the buy-in of membership is is vital. I think that's key. Uh, if you can't communicate it properly to them, you can't get them engaged in it as well. So it yeah. starts it starts with the core group, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's your that's your biggest target as far as marketing. It sounds like you know getting the group on board. And then behind you, um, so that they they can effectively support anything that you do going forward. Yeah. So. Um. So, kind of. A lot of times in in the marketing class, we dip into other people's classes. Um. So one one thing that I feel like I don't know if it was covered in the president's class. Um, but when you are trying to, to drive that buy-in um, or when you're trying to look for a volunteer to help with a marketing project, uh, the last thing that I, that I would recommend anyone do, does is a cattle call from in front of the risers. Um, because when you do that, Everybody looks at each other and say, well, I'm not going to do it. You do it. Well, I'm not going to do it. You do it. Um, so I would be very intentional with who I, who I reach out to. Um, you know, I, I've, I've identified Tom to be the guy that I want to reach out to. And, and I'll say, Tom, I, I, need, I need some help with this project. I would like to ask you to help, help me with it. And here's why I think you're the person to help me with it. Um, that way that person knows that that way Tom knows that I specifically chose him, that I, it wasn't, it wasn't just a man. I need someone to help Tom's closest to me. Let me go ask him that, that it's, I see a, a value in your skill set that will benefit the chapter. Will you please help me? Um, and if if you have to resort to to a cattle call of some some kind, I I would I would do my best to see if I could have a plant, someone to raise their hand first, because once one person raises their hand, then somebody's somebody is inevitably going to say, well, yeah, I, I can help out too. They just don't want to be the first one, um, you know. So if you can be like, "Hey, Tom, I'm I'm during our during our meeting during break, you know, I'm going to ask for for volunteers to help me with this. Would would you mind raising your hand first? And then you know maybe maybe Tom can give it a give it a second, like you know, like he's mulling it over. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll I'll help. And hey, Jim, why don't you help me too? You know, then then it can be a little bit more more organic. I, so I, I hope, I hope that you've felt that this last almost two hours has been a, a valuable use of your time. Um, if not, don't tell me. Um, I, I put, I put my contact information in the chat box. Um, so you, you, it's on the district website too. Um, so since most of you aren't the aren't the actual uh, marketing person, you can share that with them. Um, I am more than happy to answer questions, answer emails, jump on a Zoom call if I need to, um, help people brainstorm. You know that that's what I'm here for. You know I. I get the word out for the dis district stuff, but that's only part of my job. The other part is to help help the chapters be successful. So if your marketing guys have any questions, please, please don't hesitate to tell them to, to, to reach out to me and shoot me an email or a text or smoke signals. What, whatever it takes to get in contact with me, I, I'm happy to help. Brett? 
Do you know how this is going to be posted after the fact? Um, so I know that we're recording them. Right. Um, I have not been made aware yet of how we're going to um, how we're going to share them. Okay. I don't think I don't Don will either. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're just going to post them online and say here they are, or I I don't know. I haven't I haven't been told yet. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Michael, for taking time out of your day to do this for us. This, uh, this whole seminar has been invaluable for me. Like I'm, I'm a first time president, so I'm just trying to soak up whatever I can and mm -hmm. um, try to try to make sense out of it all. So I just I just want to help our organization become successful. So thank you. Uh, again. As long as you understand that as a first year president, if, if something goes wrong, it's your fault. I can't blame it on the past one. <laughs> I tried <laughs> that. It doesn't that's, work. That's the norm. It happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I know today's been a long day for, for a lot of you. Um, it, it's a long day when we're in person, but it's more fun that way. Um, so I know this isn't the ideal way well, for us to be together. Everybody but in your ventures ahead and your knowledge is hope it works out. And thank you for sharing the best practices too. Gives me some good material to bring back to my chapter. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Brent. All right. So unless anybody has any other questions, then then uh, I'll I'll let is you that, guys go and get some supper it, and is it Michael or Brent? Team. Is it Michael or Brett? It's Michael, Michael right? Okay, Michael. Okay, because I yeah. got a uh, the chat on here says Michael. I want to make sure I got the right contacts here. So yeah, Brett Brett is the guy that's in charge of Leadership Academy, and we're using his account, so that that's why it has his name on there. All right. Thanks again. You're welcome. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Mike.